Hey everybody, Renix Rain here. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Every Star Wars Game Ever. And here we are for the first time on the second episode of the same game, uh, playing 1987's Star Wars uh, for the Famicom. Uh, so I'm doing pretty good on force points, not too bad. Um, we're gonna really need a lot here in this level. Um, and not just because, there's even like one or two instances where it's not just a matter of, eh, it'll be easier if I just do this, you know, instead I can just hover over this because I don't want to deal with these enemies. No, there's actually a couple of points where you literally cannot progress without <laughs> the, uh, some of the abilities. Um, yeah, so I'm doing okay. Now, actually, the nice thing about this uh, level is that the enemies respawn because the different screens are, um, you know, the game thinks of them differently. It's not like a scrolling sort of thing. So we can, uh, when we have opportunities to do this, yeah, I can just keep grinding like this um, pretty easily. Some screens, obviously, are going to be easier than others to do this with, but this is a very, very easy screen um, because those little robots or whatever on the floor, they don't fire weapons or anything. And even the stormtrooper has his back turned to you, so as long as you, you know, don't run into him, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're okay. Time this jump reel, or I could just hover. Eh, why not? Bye! Uh, let's see, let's, can we make it all the way? Yes, perfect. Great. Now, I think this is actually the first level where the whole uh, novice versus pro mission. Um, oh, actually, never mind. I'm not supposed to go that way. Uh, yeah, this is a very difficult level because it's really a maze. You wouldn't think that you're supposed to drop through that. Also, uh, as tempting as it is, um, I'm not going to grab that blaster. But what I am going to do is I'm going to exit and enter this uh, real quick, and I'm just going to grind for some force gems or points. So be right back. Okay, I think... That makes 99. Okay, great, perfect. So yes, a uh, very difficult level because it's really one big maze. Um, it's very hard. Maybe th there might be actually multiple paths uh, that you can take. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but the reason I didn't take the blaster is because actually if you take the blaster, you cannot beat this area. You need to have the lightsaber. There we go, to break these doors. By the way, there's Boba Fett for like two seconds. He totally got hosed on this, because everyone knows Boba Fett's the best. Yes, I'm a Boba Fett fanboy. Well, she might not recognize me, because I'm not dressed as a stormtrooper. I know that seems odd, why well, I, I chose that, uh... Why I chose the, uh, to, to, to turn my saber into a blaster, but here's why. Oh, come on! <sighs> Great. Well, I lost a life anyway. Because I, because that's the thing, is that, that, that he's, he's, he's there, like, right away. So you gotta, gotta be quick on the trigger. Uh, okay. Oh, did I get them both? Oh, I thought I got them both in one shot. So, of course, classic fighting the garbage monster. Oh, no! Oh, no! And just like in the movie, kind of, uh... Actually, we have to call R2, right? Because in the movie, what does he say? He's... 3PO! 3PO! There we go. So, kind of a... I guess kind of a mini puzzle there. Yes, of course, the walls will eventually close on... Close in on you and uh, kill you if you don't uh, use that... Um, little uh, interface there to, to talk to uh, to talk to R2. Which, again, is not really anything they tell you in the game. <laughs> You know, letting you know that actually I went the wrong way. Uh, right? I think I need to go down. I hope I need to go down. One more? Looking for two stormtroopers. There we go. Uh, yeah, the game doesn't really tell you that, that those little, those icons actually do come into play, uh, later. I mean, I guess you can kind of tell because when you go to the screen, you can hover, you know, put the, the, the cursor underneath the, the different, uh, um, character icons, but again, they don't really tell you what they do, <laughs> and they're very level specific too. I mean, if I was to use any of them now, it doesn't do anything. 
These things are annoying, uh, mostly because you can't kill them. Now, see, I think actually you probably could come from that way and maybe just use levitate and kind of just fly over those um, spikes there. So there, there probably are a couple of uh, uh, a couple of routes, but but this is the route that I just found to be the, to be the the most sensible for me anyway. Here we play the waiting game. There we go. Too bad I can't get that gem. Maybe I can. Nope. Okay. All right. I actually want to wait for my levitation to wear off here. There we go. And if we just duck down here, uh, these uh, floating balls will never hurt us, and two of them will just fly out of the room. Uh, I'm not sure if I completed this thought earlier, uh, but I, I was saying how this is actually, I think, the first level in the game where uh, there's a, a significant difference, a noticeable difference, between the difficulty levels, novice versus pro. Um, there's a lot more enemies here in the Death Star. Um, some rooms seem probably pretty empty. Um, like, I think this one has, uh, when you're playing on pro, yeah, it still has the little, like, whatever those sparks are at the bottom, but I think it also has one of those flying uh, balls that we just saw in the other room. Um, I think there's, like, more stormtroopers and that kind of thing. Um, I think also, I think the, the, the pro option, the hard option, as if this game isn't hard enough on its own, is, um, there are less one-ups, um, hidden throughout the levels. But again, I, I played pro just for a little bit, and even with save states and, um, that sort of thing, I just, I wasn't having it. It was super not fun. I mean, to be honest, this game is really turned out to be, uh, uh, time it here real quick. I think I got it. Okay. Uh, really turning out to be like a labor of love. Oh no! And that's the easy part. Well, at least it put me on the other side here. I got one life still? Man. Just jump over this guy. It's not worth it. You ain't worth it. Oh, yeah, so here's that area, that example of where you need to have this... Uh, I think it costs 30 force points to levitate. And you know what? I'm not taking any chances here. I hate making that jump. So, Is it a little wasteful? Perhaps, but if I really wanted to, I could just grind here for a little bit. see what we get though let's see what the how our force uh, force points look after uh, after this here uh, I think I'm gonna yeah, I'm just gonna go for it uh, uh, uh. this room definitely has a lot more enemies to it uh, by the way, this is, uh, you saw that door just went up? So technically, actually, when you first start the whole Death Star level, you can get to this screen. Um, uh, that door would be blocked. You have to have Leia in your party before that door goes up. Yes, this is actually Vader this time. And so you can see, as usual, the first time we hit him, he just jumps back, it doesn't turn into anything. Now, uh... This uh, really aggravated me. I had to look up a guide on this. Um, what you have to do is, uh, after you hit Vader the first time, we need to go and select the Obi-Wan icon here. I mean, he did say, call me whenever you need help. But basically, if we didn't do that, none of these hits would do anything. He's uh, Vader is, like, invincible until you uh, activate the Obi-Wan icon weird, right? Yeah, I know. It pissed me off so much when I was playing it. I'm like, I know I'm hitting him. I know I'm hitting him. And so we get another Millennium Falcon level. We're off to save Chewie this time. So here's where I, because now we start to get a lot of ties all at once. So basically just pushing in one direction, it doesn't really matter, left or right. Uh, basically just stick with one direction. Um, story of my life! Yeah. Uh, he's, stick to one direction and um, just wait for the uh, ties to kind of just fly into the center. I think that's uh, a lot better, otherwise um, 
you have to work with the shields a lot, or there's multiple of those, like, green laser things coming at you, and it's it's more trouble than it's worth. This is, admittedly, this probably takes more time. It's not maybe as fun to watch. It's a little bit more tedious. Um, but I'd rather be tedious. Tina the Ice Planet. That's my mom's name. Um, I... I I don't know why they translated it to Tina. I mean, personally, I would think... I mean, I don't speak Japanese, and I haven't seen the original Japanese, like, letters and characters... Well, not letters, but characters, whatever, symbols. Um, uh, I would think that this is Hoth, right? I mean, again, this game is taking so many liberties with the storyline. He doesn't go to Hoth in episode uh, four. Yeah, but come on, also... Darth Vader doesn't turn into Ridley from Metroid, okay? Um, it's kind of a tricky, not really a tricky jump here, but there's a stormtrooper on this platform, so we basically need to jump as soon as we land on it. There we go. I was thinking about levitating. I'm also thinking about levitating here, because this kind of sucks, but I'm... Honestly, I actually should have just swallowed my pride. I should have done more force gem grinding. Let's just try it, because these, these, that platform is going to melt, and there's two of them. Whoop. Hit. Okay. All right. Now, I actually don't know how you're supposed to get to that speeder down there. I'm thinking you'd have to go, I guess, like, and yes, I have to jump through these. It's instant death if I touch either one of them. There we go. So I would think that you would be able to levitate down there, but as soon as you move this far, like the gem or the gem, the 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 speeder icon disappears anyway. So I I don't know what that's all about. These little guys, they kind of remind me of those enemies, probably mostly because of like how they jump and when they jump. See how they have like the little pointy feet uh, at the bottom? They they remind me of those little like um, like little like black ninja guys from um, from. Uh, from, like the Kirby franchise, right? Those are from Kirby. And actually, I feel like I've talked about these characters before, and I couldn't remember if they're from Mario or if they're from Kirby, or if they're in both. No, I think, I think what I'm thinking of is the, the, the little guys they're in, and what a coincidence this is. I was talking about this before. Um, I can make this jump. It's not too bad. Uh. One thing I will say about this level is that even though it's an ice level, um, you know, ice levels usually really suck in video games because, like, they compensate for the ice and you're, like, super slippery. This game does not do that. <laughs> uh, this part sucks. There's bats. Damn it. Now I don't have my blaster, so this is going to be even more difficult. But these, these platforms do stop when you jump up, so I can kind of time it. Or that. I could just do that. That's fine. Uh, that kind of looks like... Is it just me, or does that kind of look like it could be Munbanda? I'm not familiar with that character, but I think he looks a lot like um, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> uh, but actually, yes, we can't fight this guy. What we need to do instead is use C-3PO, because he is fluent and over... Four million forms of communication? How many forms of communication does C-3PO say he knows? I'm not too sure about that, but... He's our universal translator. God bless him. Those guys are not worth it with that melting ice. Oh yeah, uh... Ah, the moment has passed. I think those little, like, those those, like, black, like, ninja jumping guys, I think they're actually in... Oh, yeah, the, the Flying Stormtrooper. I forgot about, <laughs> forgot about those guys. I think they're actually in Super Mario Bros. 2, the American version. But again, they I feel like they show up in Kirby, or they show up somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, I'm do we get... I don't think we get Force Gems from the Ice Blocks. I think it's only the ones with, like, the stars on them. Yeah, there's nothing here. Okay. And I think this is actually the end here. Uh, here we have a space whale. 
And again, we have to call upon our friend C-3PO. Because he also speaks whale. Can you get a ride on the whale? Apparently it worked. <laughs> this looks ridiculous. As if this game wasn't ridiculous enough. Alright. Uh, and so here we are in the base. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a little save state. And let's head on in. <laughs> Seems a little ironic to have these fireballs in this ice place. <laughs> Planet Tina, not Planet Hoth. So um, they're trying to make it look like you need to jump across these blocks. And see up top there's like those stalactites that'll fall on you. Um, you can actually kind of glitch here. Not glitch, but just go like that. You don't even need to worry about it. Oh, there's that guy. That jumpy guy. Uh, this is a room where I could do some grinding for gems. What I got? 43? Um, probably going to regret it, but I'm going to say no. Let's go ahead and grab that life and then use levitate real quick. Because, boy, do I need lives. Force points, I can kind of live without them, I guess. There's a, there's a much better grinding uh, point up later. Fall right through that. He's not worth my time. Alright, this part's really difficult though, because we gotta run, jump, and not hit this guy. Shit. Well, I'm glad I picked up that extra life. The good thing is that when you die in screens like this, as you can see, it always puts you on the right side of the screen, and that's usually where you need to go anyway. Where we do not need to go is down. It's kind of a tricky jump to make. But uh, here is arguably an easier place to uh, grind for these force points. You can see up top uh, in the right there, there's those blocks that I can actually use. Um, but I just got to get up there. And of course, these are the melting blocks. So uh, here we go. There we go. They usually don't give up big gems, so it takes a while. Um, but I'm just going to keep going up and down here, and I'm just going to grind here for... Uh, for some time, so I will see you guys in uh, just a second. Alright. Let's see. The most annoying part is uh, you guys didn't get to see it. How many do I got now? 73? That's pretty good. It's good enough. Sometimes those blocks don't give you anything. Like, I've actually just, like, a couple times went up there and I got no gems at all. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and save, so I don't lose out on all that, because we've got another Vader fight coming up. Who's this? Wampa Vader. Not the Wonka Vader, the Wampa Vader. Uh, so he's already telling us uh, who he's going to trans- or how he's going to transform. Yeah, he turns into a Wampa. And he's actually not that difficult. Uh, it's really a matter of, like, rhythm and timing. Um, whoops. Just jump over him, you know, wait until he jumps first and then jump over him immediately, get him in the back. Really not not too difficult when you know what to do. All right, so we have enough points here uh, where uh, we're totally going to, I guess it's cheating, kind of not really. Technically, what we would need to do is we need to go down that ladder and kind of retrace our steps, but what you can do instead... Oh, come on. God, I don't know why down wasn't working. That's all right. Uh, is that now, if we have... We have enough points, right? If I mean, if I guess if you didn't, you could just grind again. Uh, but we can just actually levitate right up this. And here we are, back at this screen. And there we go. Nice, right? Oh, get a couple extra force points? Nah. Um, should we free Chewy? Yeah, I guess so. And Chewie also can speak English in this one. <laughs> oh, also, again, I know this is, like, super nitpicky when we're talking about all the other liberties they're taking with the storyline. Hey, finally, Han Solo shows up. How about that? <laughs> Hope you don't mind. I've been flying your ship for, like, the past, uh... How long have I been playing this game? About 30 minutes? 40 minutes? 
Um, but yeah, oh yeah, uh, in like the little like, I don't know, not quite cutscenes, but in like the little dialogues that he has with like characters when he rescues them, uh, and in like the opening, god, I hesitate to even call it a cutscene, but they do illustrate, you know, Luke having that sandy blonde hair like Luke Skywalker does. But you might notice is, is that uh, when I'm playing, um, like the little sprite, the character that I'm actually controlling, has black hair. Um, and uh, from what I've come to understand, it was just a, a limitation of the system. Um, you know, these older systems could only handle so many colors uh, at one time. And so I guess they, uh, to, to, to enable the, uh, developers to have enough, and this is not going well, there we go, uh, for, for the developers to be able to put, like, enough, like, different, like, textures and colors into the level design, it's, uh, because I guess, like, black, um, doesn't really count as a color when you're making games on these kinds of systems. Black is just, like, like, white and black aren't colors, right? It's just kind of like a, a neutral, like, absence of color kind of thing for the computer. Um, so they decided to give him uh, black hair in the gameplay so that they could, you know, make these brilliant-looking uh, <laughs> uh, scenescapes instead. Um, but this seems like a pretty good natural stopping point, so I've already gone ahead and saved. So um, I think next time we'll be able to finish up the game because we're actually almost at the end here. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. I do always appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, when we come back next time, we'll finish up this game. Uh, so until then, may the Force be with you.